Hello, hello. <laughs> I was just looking at the countdown. Did you see the same countdown that I saw? The 20? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> it so, felt like I was about to be a part of a Star Wars movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Black Excellence Live. This is something that we're doing every Tuesday for the month of February. And the goal is to educate and enlighten Black business owners. So we invite business experts on to share their experience, tools, tips, strategy, strategies to help you thrive, help your business grow for 20 21 and beyond. And so also what we're going to be doing is I'm going to announce a keyword later on. And all you have to do is enter that keyword on our website, magic945.com or 979thebeat.com. And is it 979? No, thebeatdfw.com for your chance to win $10,000 in free radio advertising. That's dope, right? So without further ado, I, oh, also I want to let you know that you can, if along the way you have any questions or comments, just, you know, just click on the comment section and we'll both see your question or comment. But our guest for this week is Scotty Smith the second. He's the CEO of Scotty Smith and Associates SSA. He's a licensed broker, developer, author, and entrepreneur based here in Dallas, Texas. With 15 years of experience, he's a veteran in the real estate industry who's helped thousands of people nationwide experience the dream of home ownership and real estate investing. He's been featured in Black Enterprise, Fox News, Forbes, and more as a real estate subject matter expert. For, and for, I'm sorry, and more as a, a real estate subject matter expert. Now, Smith's interest in real estate grew after he purchased his first home and rented out the additional bedrooms. Once he saw the potential investing in real estate had to offer, he decided to become a licensed real estate agent. In 2011, a couple of years after becoming an agent, he founded SSA, a real estate brokerage located in Dallas with another agent. And since then, the company has grown with new agents, continuing to join the team and making SSA one of the fastest growing independent real estate brokerages in North Texas. In addition to having a successful brokerage, his leadership and hard work um, have afforded him the opportunity to not only be a part of the growth and development of affordable housing in Dallas communities, but also serve on several boards of DFW organizations. Smith has also been recognized by state officials and civic organizations in Dallas for his dedication and lifelong commitment to use his passion for real estate to provide an avenue to help people in his community. Welcome, Scotty. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, I, first off, I want to give a major shout out to Aria Bell for crafting that beautiful. Uh, <laughs> that beautiful oh, you didn't write that? You I didn't write that about yourself? That. You made me sound magnificent. Aria, if you're listening, thank you. I now, isn't that amazing when someone else can write about you and you can't? I, I can't seem to write like that for myself. But when I see someone else write about me, it's like, wow, that's me. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting up here like, yo, it, it, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That that's a that's an amazing bio. Yeah. Shout out, kudos to her for real. <laughs> you you owe her lunch. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> well, I just want to jump right into it. I want you to talk about your entrepreneur journey. How did you get to where you are right now? So it's a, it's a very interesting journey. Um, so um, my, my, my stepfather, uh, I call him my pops, but my pops was an entrepreneur all of his life. He was in the, you know, in the construction business. Um, and, you know, he took us on roofs under houses. We, were, we ran electrical work, HVAC work. We did all of that stuff with them. Um, but what I learned was the technician side of the business. And it wasn't until, you know, after I went to college, I said, you know, in business, it's not always about just, you know, going out and doing. You got to have systems. You got to have processes. And I learned that when I came to North Texas. But more, 
more specifically, um, I took a real estate class and my professor at the time really challenged us. He challenged us and said, if you guys don't own real estate by the end of this class, you haven't learned anything and I haven't taught you anything. And so here I am as a, you know, as an 18 year old young man uh, who probably still had a curfew when I go back home to Houston with my mom and this guy challenging us to, to own real estate. And so, I, of course, uh, I'm glad that wasn't a part of the grade because I didn't accomplish that. But it wasn't until the next June when I, you know, after I turned 19 that I, I bought my first uh, property using some scholarship money. And and through that process, I, I learned something. One, there are some agents who are out there that are just trying to make a book. Right. Although I was grateful, there was so much that I didn't learn throughout the process that I didn't know throughout the process. And I thought that uh, my agent was going to tell me, well, I decided that I wanted to change the status quo of what real estate agents uh, did and how they reacted and interacted with their clients. And so I launched Scotty Smith and Associates after I got licensed specifically to help people understand fully about the home buying process and about the wealth building uh, opportunity that it creates, particularly in the black community. And so that is how I started. Along the way, we've actually, you know, we, we, we've done some fantastic and amazing things. You know, my team and I, uh, since 2011, uh, have helped thousands of clients. And that's just not a number that we're throwing out. I, I went through at the end of last year and just pulled you know, all the transactions that I, that we've ever done in the past, you know, 10 years. And it was it was over a thousand families that we've helped, most of them uh, of which are, are black. And so we we take uh, we take pride in, in, in not only selling real estate, but also helping people understand the value of owning real estate early <laughs> and mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. As possible, and so you know, we 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 take the, the 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 approach. You know, by nature, I'm a teacher, right? And so, you know, I, I feel like I have to teach people, and that's kind of the, the the culture that we've created here in my in my office. We need to make certain that we're teaching, we're advising, and that's why we're Scotty Smith and Associates, real estate advisors, instead of you know just real estate salespeople, just real estate agents. Real estate, we are more than just a realtor, we're, we're advisors to people who are understanding that this is going to be one of the most important and largest financial transactions that most black people ever make in life. And Absolutely. so what we do is we educate. And that's what kind of sets us apart. And we, we focus and we lead with that. And it's really, it, I tell people this a lot because my goal, my personal life goal is very, very simple. And it's to help people. And I just use real estate as my vehicle to do so. And so that's, you know, that's how we we, we started. That is, that's been my why. And that's kind of what's been coasting us along here. And it didn't always get it right. Uh, but that is kind of what I always refer back to and remember. So that as we're going along in this journey, we, we got something to, to stand on. So, Absolutely. Now, I just... I, when I think about experts in industries, mm -hmm. every time I have a conversation with someone, they say they're an expert in this industry or not say or we know them as an expert because we know you are an expert. You're not just saying that. Yeah. But I want uh, every time I have these conversations, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is people, they say they have a mentor. They had a mentor. So is that you feel like having a mentor is important? Do you have a mentor? Or did you have a mentor along your journey? So that is extremely important. So let me tell you a story. Um, when I got my broker's license, there, there was, you know, myself and another gentleman were the youngest two brokers in North Texas. And, you know, he was a Middle Eastern guy um, and I was black. You know, I'm black. And it was very hard for us to find mentors. One, I was very specific about what I was looking for in a mentor. I wanted somebody who was successful in real estate and somebody who could relate to me culturally. Mm -hmm. um, it was extremely hard for me to find that. And then mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, my college, you know, a guy who went to college kind of took me under his wings and really showed me the ropes. His name was Arian Ramsar. Um, and he showed me what it really meant to operate and navigate in the real estate industry, which is, you know, predominantly, uh, you know, is dominated by white women. 
Mm -hmm. And so uh, he showed me how to navigate that. And, you know, we, we ended up parting ways. He went on to grow his multifamily business. I decided to, to focus on the residential side. And then I connected with one of my fraternity brothers, uh, Mr. Charles O'Neill. Mr. Charles O'Neill not only, um, you know, encouraged me uh, from the fraternity side, but also mm -hmm. from just business altogether. And he, he, he schooled me on a number of things here in, in, in Dallas. He helped me to understand because, you know, what we have as entrepreneurs is an is a ability to just stay focused and targeted on what we're doing in our business, right? Mm -hmm. if right. I'm real, just focus on real estate and that's it. But what, what, what Charles O'Neill helped me to do is he helped me to understand the entire landscape of black business and how we play a role in this whole economic, you know, progress of our people. And so, that's been my mentor. You know, he, he is, a, you know, he's an older guy, but he he's youthful uh, in mind. And we, we we get together. We talk. I call him for one thing and he you know, we're on the phone for hours. Uh, and so it's it's extremely important. If you don't have a mentor, I encourage it. Find one. Uh, it's even got to the point where, you know, I've paid to have, you know, somebody who's a, a coach in real estate. And so start there and then, you know, find somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. so, Yes, I have a mentor now. Um, I didn't realize the importance until, you know, I developed that relationship with somebody. And when I, I wake up in the morning and just getting that text from her, that encouraging text, <laughs> you know, to go about my day with purpose, that just it does so much. You know, really that's, that's so important, too. And so actually about five years ago, I was introduced to the concept of kind of having this life board of directors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Got into that. And so I, I kind of start putting together my life board of directors. You know, I got, you know, Charles O'Neill and Johnny Collins and then you know, mm -hmm. Bill Watts. And, and then, you know, ironically enough, one of the agents that, that came into our office, I hired him probably five years ago now. Um, he just, he really doesn't know this, but he stepped into my life prime. He stepped into my life and it's like, he mentors me without even knowing that he's mentoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why it's so that's a true mentor. That's yeah. a true mentor. When you surround yourself with people who one will speak life into you and understand mm -hmm. that this journey of entrepreneurship ain't easy. Right. Absolutely. Part, but people who understand that that you are really working to do something good for your community and for mm -hmm. your life. And so you gotta have those people around you, man. It's 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 important. Yes, you do. I I'm learning that every day, every day. Yeah. Now, you know, the pandemic hit in 2020 yeah. and I, a lot of businesses have been affected. A lot of business have, ha have not been able to survive up until yeah. this point. Uh, how did it affect your business and, and what have you been doing to adjust? Gotcha. So by God's grace, uh, we were still able to keep our doors open. Um, but my entire, like, I guess my phrase for 2020 was, I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. and so was, <laughs> real estate was, was interesting because as soon as, you know, North Texas got the, the information about, hey, everything got to shut down, everything stopped. Real estate stopped. We had a number of deals just fold mm. and around the ending part of April, beginning of May everything started shooting back up. And so we had some of the busiest times uh, that we've ever had as a, as a broker. Uh, and so we saw some increase. We lost some, some, some agents, um, some agents, you know, jump ship, which is, which is fine. Uh, it's just part of the growing process within, uh, within business, but we were able to capitalize on uh, some of the lease space where people were moving out or, or wow. And so we, we actually recently moved our office headquarters to South Dallas, which is kind of the community that we serve. Um, but we were able to cap capitalize on that. And so while I say, you know, the pandemic really did sit us down, you know, and I, I have two little ones who were here homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I didn't expect that. It was it was a great year for us. We, we had a, now, an amazing time. Yeah. What was the conversation you had with your team when you were trying to transition, when you saw things going one way and you like, we got to flip this? You know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, 
it, it took me about three weeks to, to really shake, uh, probably three weeks to a month to really shake back. And I was shook, just be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I was shook. Um, and then, you know, I kind of I kind of got down and started praying, having conversations with God. And I said, OK, what do I need to do? Um, and so we started, you know, we took everything virtual. We made certain that we were in contact. Um, I started sending a ton of resources out to the team. Um, we had uh, a, a really good connection or contact with, um, you know, with the, you know, the payroll protection program and the SBA. Mm -hmm. So all of our agents are 1099 employees. So we, mm -hmm. we walked in that information, got them on those private webinars where they were able to capitalize on that and stay afloat. Um, okay. So, you know, that I'm not, that pandemic had me shook for a little bit. <laughs> yes. It like, had everyone that way. It, it had everyone having to adjust the way they communicate, yeah. um, how they do business. Now, how important was social media or your, you know, any type of digital um, aspects? How important was that in your transition? And, you know, how do well, you use social media for your business? So most of our business, about 95 percent of our business is referral based. Right. And so that's people referring. And so and this is just something again, that's why I say shout out to Ari, shout out to Cassie. They they, they kind of dogged me out. They said, you need to get a better presence on show, social media. And I'm like, I don't want to because all of the people that I'm helping, they're here in real life. They're here, yeah. <laughs> We had to make a shift, though, because we did start showing homes virtually. We had to have a lot more consultations, you know, through a little, you know, through Zoom. Right. And Zoom. So it, it made a shift our entire focus on, hey, I know we're normally used to, you know, doing lunch with our clients or, you know, hosting these home buyer conversations, uh, you know, maybe at a house that we're having an open uh, open house on or something like that. But we got a shift and that's what we, mm -hmm. we did. And so uh, many of our agents got way more active on social media, um, which, I mean, it's, it's good for the brand because the more mm -hmm. agents, the more brand recognition that we have. And, you know, we just kept kept flowing. Mm -hmm. and, um, so what would you say you now want to help people out with some strategies and some tips? What would okay. you say your most uh, effective growth strategy has been and what would you recommend for, for so this is this is my my tip my tip to entrepreneurs when it comes to growth and growth strategy i, I wrote down four you know as i was kind of looking at these questions but the first one is 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 niche down figure out what you do really really well mm -hmm. and do that whatever your your service your product is do that and do, do that, that. Really well i see a lot of uh a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners that are trying to do so much and, mm -hmm. and you reach out to them and it's like, okay, well, what is it that you do? Is it, mm -hmm. is it it's not clear. It's not, not clear. clear. Yeah. You have a clear understanding uh, of, of what it is that you do. Um, so, so, figure so that out whole Jack of all trades thing that just doesn't. Well, see, the, the, the problem with that is people forget the second part of that. It's a Jack of all trades and a master of none. And so in order to be successful, really successful and really have something that you can hand down to your kids on a legacy play, you got to master some things and you got to be able to master it, put the systems in place so it can function on its own while you're out on the beach somewhere. Right. right. So that's what you know, when, when it comes to business ownership, that's what freedom looks like. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to put, you know, the systems and the processes in place so that everything flows without me even being there. And so that's actually the second thing, put some systems and some processes around what you do. I should be able to come to your business, look at something and know, you know, where everything goes. The best example of a, of a solid system is McDonald's, right? You go to McDonald's and when you walk into that, any McDonald's in the entire world, mm -hmm. you know what's behind that person that's at the cash register. What is it? It's the menu. And you know right. what's over there, that's, the drive through. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's a system. And so people, it's important to create systems and processes that work and help flow your business in such a way that you can plug people into it. And that's with everything. And I'm, I'm you know, I do mentoring and coaching for my agents. Uh, one of my agents and I just had a conversation about that last week. And it's, hey, 
I'm taking you through this process of learning what it means to get from, you know, a phone call to, you know, to a closed contract is because mm-hmm. I want you to master each step of the process so that you can know where you can plug people into, right? Mm-hmm. So once you have that system down, you understand the processes involved with that. Then you can start taking a step back, plugging people in, creating jobs, creating employment for the community. Mm-hmm. In my mind, that's the, that's the ultimate, you know, that's the ultimate just kind of you know, aha moment for me is, hey, if I perfect my system, then I can start hiring people from the community. Mm-hmm. So that's what we all have to remember from a system process. So understand your niche, create a system. And then the uh, the other one is, um, you know, find good help. It's so important to find good help. Um, as entrepreneurs, and really, you know, it's interesting as, as black folks and black business owners, we love the aspect of the grind, mm-hmm. We're grinding it out. I'm on my grind. I'm hustling. Yeah. I'm doing this. I'm staying up at night. I'm, you know, because we somewhere along the road, somebody told us that was what you had to do. Yeah. Well, not really, right? Find yeah. you good help. Find you people. Who, a good team. A good team. Somebody who knows how to do what that is better than you do right Mm -hmm. and that's so important we got to take a step back and understand hey we're we're technicians by trade we 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 likely started this job or started this this business because we had a job that we were good at and we said you know what i can do that better on my own and then we glorify being the technician and doing all that but then forgetting well shoot i gotta do payroll and i got right and I got to do the marketing and I got to do the PR and I got to figure out what to do on my bio so I can get picked up on these things, you know. So you put the right people in place so that you can understand and really focus on what you're great at. Exactly. So <laughs> what you're great at. at. Yeah. And speaking of building your team, what advice would you give someone who has to build a team and, and selecting new employees? So, um, that that's a, that's such a great question, and um, that's something that I'm still working on. But a couple years ago, I got this great advice: hire slow and fire fast. Hire slow and fire fast. One, when you hire slow, you really understand and really get to know this person. You really get to understand if they're going to be a fit for the culture. If they're going to be able to do the job, right? Because we got a lot of people out there that fluff up their resumes, right? Yes, they so do. They serve, you, you send them through, send them through the process, right? You know, send them through the process, you know, let them talk to two or three people on your team. And so I have, mm-hmm. you know, an agent advisory board and any anyone that I hire, I, I, I ask my agent advisory board if they have the time, you know, hey, would you mind talking to this person, you know, to see if they'll be a good fit for the culture? And we we have a really tight knit culture where we're like a family, you know. We talk, we invite, you know, and that's how it's always been. But we want to make certain that this person is going to be good for the culture first. Absolutely, and they, do, and they that's do important. Are they willing to learn the job? That's mm-hmm. second, you know. So so fire fire fast though, because you know all it takes is one bad apple to ruin the bunch, and I. <laughs> Yes, I, we've all been there. We've all worked with that bad apple in the past. It down morale of the company. Yes. I live right, and so having having started my company so so young, it you know I was blinded to some of the things, right, and thinking that I can you know it doesn't it doesn't really matter. We can we can you know I see potential in everybody. Bring them in. It doesn't matter. Everybody, come on. We will you know it's Scotty Smith and Associates. We love you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> Does it work all the time? It didn't, yeah. work. it didn't work. Definitely didn't work. And you know what? And that's kind of a lot of times when you want to help people and you have a big heart. It's hard. It's hard yeah. to to yeah. you know your discernment kind of goes out the window a little bit. But you you know, in order for your business, 
you got to protect your assets. You got to protect your business. You got, you know, so you have to make those hard decisions on who you're going to let be a part of your organization or even associated with your organization. And I get that. But because I'm that person, I'm like, oh, well, let's give you a chance. Like I'm like bringing all the little lost puppies. Yeah. I, I, I can be that person. And I know if I was a business owner, that would definitely have to change. It, it's, it's a hard thing because like you said when your natural self is somebody with a big heart you want to you want to give and give and mm -hmm. give and you don't recognize or you're blinded to the fact that you know this person really isn't worthy of even being you know a part of the giving let yeah. alone being a part of your co your company and so <laughs> recognizing it recognizing it you know you just have to you gotta do it yeah okay? So those Absolutely. are the three. Actually, the fourth one that I have is continue to learn. Continue to learn because That's the industry, okay. the world is changing. Um, I tell we saw how fast it changed in a few months. Like we, everybody had to learn how to shift and operate differently at the drop of a dime. At the drop. So continue to learn. Um, I let agents know I know a lot about real estate, but that doesn't mean I know everything. And I'm always willing to learn. And so one of the things that um, that I say is, hey, I think I may be right, but let's go figure it out to make certain mm -hmm. that you know, there's not something new that's popped up. And so just continue to learn. Be be a be a lifelong learner of your industry that your business is operating in, because there's there's so many people that that aren't right. There's so so many people that are relying on you know relationships that may they, they may have to help them elevate. Well, we got mm -hmm. we got a little bit different as black folks, yeah. right? We, we got to make certain that we know what's going on. We're learning the game. We're learning what's changing. We're learning where things are coming from. And, and so we can execute in our business and be great at it. Absolutely. That's every business. Every day is a learning experience, you know, and what I do. And literally, once you stop figuring you need to learn something new, that's that's where you are headed towards your demise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um uh, right now, I now that I know I have everybody, you have everybody's attention. I want to tell you the code word for this week so you can enter for your chance to win $10,000 in advertising. <laughs> that is a lot of money. Yeah. This week's code word is Alico da, da Gote. Dangote. <laughs> Dangote. Dangote. I got it. He's a Nigerian billionaire business uh, magnet and ph philanthropist. He is the wealthiest person in Africa and the richest black person in the world with an estimated net worth of 13.5 billion us dollars that's uh as of july in 2020 now uh dangote group was established as a small trading firm in 1977 the same year dangote re relocated to lagos to extend the company today it's a multi-trillion nero conglomerate with many of its operations in uh Benin, Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, and Togo. With its dominance in the sugar market, market and uh refinery business, Dangote is the main supplier, 70% of the market now, to the country's soft drinks companies, breweries, and uh, confectioners. And it's the largest refinery in Africa and the third largest in the world. So that is your education about this Nigerian billionaire. So now you can pass that on to your friends and family and let them know you can do it too. Now you got to go to magic945.com or the, DF, the beatdfw.com. Click on contest. So for your chance to enter to win $10,000 in advertising. Again, the key word is Alico de Gante, that's spelled A L I K O D A N G O T E. I bet you didn't know that about him. No, I didn't. <laughs> Me either, obviously, because I'm stumbling. I'm trying to. I'm trying to pronounce these Nigerian names and words. Yes, I'm, I'm, but I'm. I'm glad I learned 
that about him today. And um, we can wrap it up, but I just want um, you to let us know how we can keep in touch with you, how someone can reach out to you for your services. Yeah, so reach out to us at uh, on IG, on Instagram, SSA Realtors. Uh, you can get me directly, Scotty L. Smith on Instagram. Uh, also, uh, you can go to www.buytheblock.com. Um, we're doing some amazing things here in South Dallas. If you're interested in one moving to South Dallas, hit us up. If you're interested really anywhere in North Texas, but we have a particular love and affinity for South Dallas. So if you're interested in being a neighbor of mine, hit us up by the If you're looking on looking at being an investor or, or, or helping to redevelop everything that's happening here in South Dallas, hit us up by the block.com. By the block.com. B U Y. The block. And I'm sorry, it's buybackthesouth.com. We changed that. Buybackthesouth.com. Buybackthesouth.com. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to check that out as soon as we log off. Oh, and by the way, if you are a, a local black owned business, we would like to feature you. We do um, a segment called Buy Black Tuesday, where we feature you on a Tuesday. So you can go to our website, get more information about that. That's magic with a J945.com. Don't forget to enter for your chance to win this $10,000. And you can join us next week, too, because we're doing it again. Like I said, we're doing this for the entire month of Black History Month. And I want to thank you, Scotty. This was a really good conversation, a lot of good information. Hopefully people were able to, you know, take not one, two, three, four, but five <laughs> strategies away from this and, you know, get motivated to propel their business <laughs> and go to the top. You know, that's all what we're trying to do. Everybody's just trying to get there. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're working for. We're working for legacy. So we got some work Absolutely. Working for legacy. That's, that's, oh, that's, that word is so important to me. It is so important to me. And I'm glad you said it. We're working towards our legacy for our legacy. For our legacy. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Scotty. And I hope you guys join next week because we have another expert to give you some more tips and strategies to help your business be successful. Thank you. Peace. Bye.